want to be married, but that uh, this certainly would not be any longer considered to be necessary uh, for sexual activity. And I was surprised then that the next item was abortion, and this, now back in 1969, four years before Roe v. Wade, uh, he said abortion will no longer be a crime. Uh, abortion would be accepted as normal and would be paid for by taxes for people who could not pay for their own abortions. Contraceptives would be made available by tax money so that uh, nobody would have to do without contraceptives. If school sex programs would lead to more pregnancies in children, that was really seen as no problem. Uh, parents who think they are opposed to abortion on moral or religious grounds will change their minds when it is their own child who is pregnant. So this will help overcome opposition to abortion. Before long, only a few diehards will still refuse to see abortion as acceptable, and they won't matter anymore. Homosexuality also was to be encouraged. Uh, people will be given permission to be homosexuals. That's the way it was stated. They won't have to hide it. And elderly people will be encouraged to continue uh, to have active sex lives uh, into their very old ages as long as they can. Uh, everyone will be given permission to have sex to enjoy however they want. Anything goes. This is the way it was put. <clears throat> and I remember thinking uh, how arrogant for this individual or whoever he represents to feel that they can give or withhold permission for people to do things. But those, that was the terminology that was used. In this regard, uh, clothing was mentioned. Clothing styles would be made more stimulating and provocative. Recall uh, back in 1969 was the time of the, the miniskirt when they were, those miniskirts were very, very high and very revealing. Uh, he said it's not just the amount of skin that is expressed, exposed that makes clothing sexually seductive, but other more subtle things are often more suggestive. Uh, things like movement and the cut of clothing and the uh, kind of fabric, the positioning of uh, accessories on the clothing. If a woman has an attractive body, why should she not show it, was uh, one of the statements. There uh, was not detail on what was meant by provocative clothing, but uh, since that time, if you watch the changes in clothing styles, uh, blue jeans are cut in a way that they're much more tight-fitting through the crotch. Uh, they form wrinkles. Uh, wrinkles essentially are arrows, uh, lines which direct one's vision to certain anatomic areas. And this was around the time of the uh, burn your bra activity. Um, he indicated that a lot of women should not go without a bra. They need a bra to be attractive. So instead of banning bras and burning them, uh, bras would come back, but uh, they would be thinner and softer, allowing more natural movement. Um, and uh, it was not specifically stated, but certainly a very thin bra is much more revealing of uh, the nipple and what else is underneath uh, than the heavier bras that were in style up to that time. Technology. Uh, earlier he said uh, sex and reproduction would be separated. You would have sex without reproduction, and then technology was reproduction without sex. Uh, this would be done in the laboratory. Indicated already much, much research was underway uh, about uh, making babies in the laboratory. There was some elaboration on that, but I don't remember the details. Uh, how much of that technology has come to my attention since that time, I don't remember. I don't remember in a way that I can distinguish what was said from what I subsequently have just learned uh, as general medical information. Families. Families would be limited in size. Uh, we already alluded to uh, not being allowed uh, ex more than two children. Divorce would be made easier and more prevalent. Most people who marry will marry more than once. More people will not marry. Unmarried people uh, would stay in hotels and even live together 
uh, that would be very common. Nobody would even ask questions about it. It would be widely accepted as uh, no different from married people being together. More women will work outside the home. More men will be transferred to other cities in their jobs. More men would travel in the work. Therefore, it would be harder for families to stay together. Um, this would tend to uh, make the marriage relationship less stable and therefore tend to make people less willing to have babies. And the extended family would be smaller and more remote. Travel would be easier, less expensive for a while, so that people who did have to travel would uh, feel that they could get back to their families, uh, not that they were abruptly being made remote from their families. But uh, one of the net effects of uh, easier divorce laws, uh, combined with the promotion of travel and transferring families from one city to another, was to create instability in the families. Uh, if both husband and wife are working and one partner gets transferred, the other one may not be easily transferred. So one either gives up his or her job and stays behind while the other leaves, or else gives up the job and risks uh, not finding employment in the new location. Rather uh, diabolical approach to uh, this whole thing. Uh, euthanasia. Everybody has a right to live only so long. The old are no longer useful. They become a burden. You should be ready to accept death. Uh, most people are. An arbitrary age limit could be established. After all, you have a right to only so many steak dinners, and so many orgasms, and so many good pleasures in life. And after you've had enough of them, and you're no longer productive, and working and contributing, then you should be ready to step aside uh, for the uh, next generation. Some things that would help people realize that they had lived long enough. He mentioned several of these. I don't remember them all. Here are a few. Uh, the use of very pale printing ink on forms that people were uh, necessary uh, to fill out so that older people wouldn't be able to read the pale ink as easily and would need to go to younger people for help. Automobile traffic patterns. There would be more high-speed uh, traffic lanes, uh, traffic patterns that would older people would, with their slower reflexes, would have trouble dealing with, uh, and thus uh, tend to lose some of their independence. Big item uh, which was elaborated at some length was the cost of medical care would be made burdensomely high. Uh, medical care would be. Uh, connected very closely with one's work, but also would be made very, very high in cost so that uh, uh, it would simply be unavailable to people beyond a certain time. And unless they had a remarkably rich supporting family, uh, they would just have to do it out care. And uh, the idea was that if uh, everybody sees enough uh, what a burden it is on the young to try to maintain the old people. Uh, and the young would become agreeable to helping mom and dad along the way, uh, provided that this was done humanely and with dignity. And then the example was uh, there could be like a nice farewell party, a real celebration, uh, mom and dad had done a good job, and then after the party's over, take the demise pill. The next topic is medicine. Uh, there would be profound changes in the practice of medicine. Overall, medicine would be much more tightly controlled. The observation was made, Congress is not going to go along uh, with national health insurance. That, in 1969, he said, is now abundantly uh, evident, but it's not necessary. We have other ways to control health care. Uh, these will come about more gradually, but all health care delivery would come under tight control. Uh, medical care would be closely connected to work. If you don't work or can't work, you won't have access to medical care. Uh, the days of hospitals giving away free care would gradually wind down until that was virtually non-existent. Costs would be forced up 
so that people won't be able to afford to go without insurance. People pay, you pay for it, you're entitled to it. It was only subsequently that I began to realize uh, the extent to which you would not be paying for it, your medical care would be paid for by others, and therefore you would uh, gratefully accept on bended knee what was offered to you as a privilege. Uh, your role uh, re being responsible for your own care would be diminished. As an aside here, this is not something that was developed at that time. I uh, didn't understand at the time. But as an aside, the way this works, everybody's made dependent on insurance. And if you don't have insurance and you pay directly, the cost of your care is enormous. The insurance company, however, paying for your care does not pay that same amount. If you are charged, uh, say, $600 for the use of an operating room, the insurance company does not pay $600 on your part. They pay three or $400. Uh, and that differential in billing uh, has the desired effect. It enables the insurance company to pay for that which you could never pay for. They get a discount that's unavailable to you. When you see your bill, you're grateful that the insurance company can do that, uh, and in this way you are dependent and virtually required to have insurance. The whole billing is uh, fraudulent. Anyhow, continuing on now, um, <clears throat> access to hospitals would be tightly controlled. Uh, identification will be needed to get into the building. Security in and around hospitals would be established and gradually increased so that uh, nobody without identification could get in or move around inside the building. Theft of hospital equipment, things like typewriters and microscopes and so forth, would be uh, allowed and uh, exaggerated, reports of it would be exaggerated, so that this would be the excuse needed to establish the need for strict security until people got used to it. Uh, and anybody moving about in a hospital would be required to wear an identification badge with uh, a photograph and telling uh, why he was there, an uh, employee or lab technician or visitor or whatever. And this is to be brought in gradually, getting everybody used to the idea of identifying themselves uh, until it was just accepted. This need for ID to move about uh, would start in small ways. Um, hospitals, some businesses, but gradually expand to include everybody in all places. It was observed that hospitals can be used to confine people uh, for the treatment of criminals. This did not mean necessarily medical treatment. Uh, at, at, that, at that time, I did not know the word psycho prison, as in the Soviet Union, but uh, uh, without trying to recall all the details, basically it was uh, describing the use of hospitals both for treating the sick and for confinement of criminals for reasons other than the medical well-being of the criminal. Definition of criminal was not given. The image of the doctor would change. No longer would the, he be seen as an individual professional in service to individual patients. But the doctor would be uh, gradually uh, recognized as a highly skilled technician um, and uh, his job would change. The job uh, is to include uh, things like executions by lethal injection. Uh, 